topic we're going to. All right. <clears throat> Today, as our topic is going to be Turmeric 101, learning from the Toledo expert, Miss Yumida, how to grow, process, and enjoy your turmeric. <clears throat> All right, and let's, we'll go ahead and get started with some of our meeting rules. If by chance we have um, technical difficulties of any kind with the meeting, um, you might have to log out and log back into the meeting. Um, also, if you could, please keep on mute. What, what we're going to do is for questions, we'll have you submit any questions through the um, Zoom chat. And Miss Jenny will take those questions. And when we get to the end of the presentation, she will present those questions to our speaker. And then we will have... Um, or answer those questions. And hopefully um, everybody knows about Pro Organic. Everybody's been to our Facebook page where we post all of these Pro Organic sponsored events and to the Facebook group where we have open discussions about Pro Organic topics. And then the organization, um, we do promote our membership um, we are actively promoting for volunteers to help out within the organization. And we currently have our farm <clears throat> certification program going on. So if you'd like to find out more about that, you can contact us. And also the POB consumer group where we do distribution for our farmers that are certified. Meeting topics, what we're going to cover today in this meeting is going to be how to grow, process, and enjoy your turmeric. And our speaker is going to be Ms. Yumida Switlow. Hopefully I didn't butcher your last name too bad. And <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll give her approximately 45 minutes to go over a presentation. It might go a little shorter or a little longer and then we'll do a brief intermission. And then after that, we will do a 30 minute Q and A. These time frames are gonna be a little bit flexible. So depending on how long she wishes to go on this, we can go or how many questions we have at the end. Um, we'll basically leave it up to her how long she wants to go for the presentation and for the questions coming from the audience. And then after the questions, we'll do our conclusion. And then now I will give the floor to Ms. Yumida, and she will do a brief introduction and start her presentation. Hello, everyone in Belize. I'm in San Francisco right now. My daughter, Narina, my business partner, is in Belize. I'm so happy to share this time with you today. So, Turmeric 101. I'd like to tell you that. Um, I didn't always know about turmeric. So it has been quite, this, um, quite the discovery. So I'm just gonna start and share my slideshow with you. Please tell me um, if you are seeing it. And are you seeing it now? Yes. Yes. Right. So um, I'd like to start with turmeric 101. And it took me a while to figure out uh, about turmeric. So I came to Belize as um, an advisor to the government of Belize from the government of Canada on youth and enterprise. And I have a passion for um, biology. I am a biologist and I love farming. I wanted to see uh, what was growing there to look for opportunities. Well, my people, I call them my peeps, the Indian people, were in Toledo having an event. And so I went to this diaspora event and lo and behold, I met a whole bunch of Indian farmers and they showed me some of their crops. And one of them was turmeric. 
And I had just returned, I had just come from Canada and saw the incredible price of turmeric uh, root and saw that the North American public was really beginning to uh, uh, enjoy and use turmeric. So that was just fabulous. And then I saw the size of the turmeric that was in Toledo and, and I was shocked. I thought, hmm, this is uh, not like the one I saw in Canada. This is way bigger. So I'm going to start with turmeric is part of the Zingabasi family. And um, there are three kinds of turmeric, um, curcuma xanthoriza, which is the black turmeric. And in the Indian language, kala means black. I haven't found this one in Belize, uh, but it has been known for centuries as a very medicinal plant. And it has been used as traditional medicine, antibacterial, antispasmodic, antioxidant, anti-tumor, anti-inflammatory, all kinds of other things. But the most popular use of that turmeric is crushed into a paste and um, administering it to anyone who has gastric issues. So I, didn't, I haven't found this turmeric in Belize yet, but I'm bringing some root from Canada, um, imported from uh, India shortly, and I'm going to try it because the price of this turmeric on the market is extremely high. So that's what the turmeric, black turmeric leaf looks like. Very, very dark um, center uh, vein. And then the flower is retracted compared to the other turmerics. And then when you pull it out, it's very bulbous. And when you cut it in half, you'll see it's very purple and black. Then we have the curcuma zidoria, which is um, white turmeric. And the Indian word for that is amba haldi. Um, zidoria does grow in Belize, but it seems to be used as an ornamental flower. I have not seen anybody in Belize use it uh, medicinally, but we tried. We had some people growing it in um, near Punta Gorda and we made a paste and it had a beautiful aroma. But uh, when we made the paste out of it, it was so bitter. However, we did bottle about 50 bottles and uh, sold it to people who really were keen on trying it. And apparently it helped them with their abdominal issues and arthritis. So here's that one again, Zadoria, and that strong dark center vein. And um, the root is very white and a huge flower, huge. Then we get to curcuma longa, which is our yellow turmeric. And in the Indian language, it's called haldi. It was brought to Belize by Indian indentured servants that came in the late 1700s. Um, and some of them were in the north and some of them in Toledo. So Cayo and Corozal and Toledo. Now there are 40 to 50 subspecies in India and, India and about 30 to 40 species in Thailand. The one in Belize um, yields about 10,000 pounds an acre, heck of a lot. Um, the small tubers, so there's the main tuber and then the small tubers off it are the seeds. It takes nine months for the first crop, but I think that, it, that to leave it in the ground for two years, you get your best first harvest. It flowers in August, so it's just finishing flowering and the flowers are green and all the way to purple, and they're hermaphroditic. They're self-pollinating. Look at this beautiful slide of turmeric growing in a wild state in Toledo. The variety we have in Belize, it's taken me a long time to figure this out, is called Alape. It has the highest color, deepest flavor of all turmerics. Alipe normally has about 6.5% curcuminoids, 
I'll talk to you about that word later. But Nalito's turmeric in uh, Toledo has 7.6% curcuminoids. We sent our turmeric to BCIT that was doing a test of turmeric root around the world. And ours came up as the highest curcuminoid content of any turmeric that they had tested from all over the world. And many people ask me, why is that? And we'll talk about that later. So turmeric contains more than 300 naturally occurring components, beta carotene, ascorbic acid, calcium, flavonoids, fiber, iron, niacin, potassium, zinc, and more. But the chemical in turmeric linked to its highly touted health effects is curcumin. Average curcumins in turmeric powder is about 1.51%. And why is that? So there's a huge difference between turmeric root, fresh, and turmeric powder. Turmeric powder is made by taking the turmeric root, blanching it in hot water, and then sun drying it, and then martyring it. And in all those processes, the curcuminoids that rest in the oils of the turmeric disappear or are reduced. Turmeric also has about 34 essential oils. So curcuma longa, look at that beautiful root coming out of the ground, um, naturally contains a mixture of three kinds of curcuminoids. So there's the major one that has, is 85%, and then there's another one that's 15%, and another one that's 5%. Hard words to say, but there they are. And turmeric has two pigments, xanthophyll, and many of you will know that xanthophyll is um, a yellow color, um, carrot, and also has carotene that carrots have. That's why that beautiful color looks like carrots. So when I got to Belize and we we're talking, I'm trying to speak um, for you all here. Mi ma se yellow ginger is good for ya. Ya better believe she. That's what my mother said and many other people. But um, look at this list of things here. 100 grams of turmeric can provide dietary fiber, vitamin B6, niacin, vitamin C, vitamin E, potassium. Look at the iron content. So for, so for those of you that are becoming, uh, you know, becoming vegetarians or are vegetarians, often there's a challenge with iron. And then they have lots of manganese, zinc, and lo and behold, no cholesterol. We did this drawing for our turmeric that we export. So lots of iron, lots of manganese, lots of vitamin B6, and then potassium, vitamin C, and zinc. I'm taking, I'm doing this quite in quite short form because I really want to hear your questions and share with you more information. But um, here, here we are, Narina and I, um, uh, she's my daughter and she does mostly the marketing and promotions. Um, I do government relations, farmer relations, I mean, grower relations <laughs> and um, working in the community, setting up the factory and all that. We started in 2016 and we went to our first trade show and we had managed to make some of the turmeric paste in the kitchen and we put it in the bottle and Narina got it, got the logo done and everything. And we uh, paid like $1,500 for a table. And we thought, oh, this is a big investment. And then when we went to this trade show, they were like booths that were $250,000 and more. We were just a little table. And when we looked up after setting up, um, there was a lineup at our table. 
and this this was an industry related event so it was all the distributors and um, the retailers etc and by the end of the two day conference we had orders and we had to go back to belize and start an operation start a factory now narina is an anthropologist and biologist i'm a biologist and i'm from the music business as well um we both are entrepreneurs and both worked in international development but was um food um science one of our strong points i would say no uh that was a huge learning curve for us and uh, we began our journey the first thing container load had to leave belize we had to learn all about logistics and export and the challenges that we would face uh, working in belize with government etc but i will say that working with our growers was amazing so um there we believe that there are two types of businesses today ones with purpose and impact and ones i believe that will not last for long so there are amazing consumer trends and that's why we say those other ones won't last for long that consumer trends around the world are looking for products that are say sustainable socially responsible 65% are looking for that 60% buy from products from companies that are socially and environmentally responsible. So they look at brands, the environmental issues, the social issues, and I would say high, we are a high purpose brand. And um, in 2020, we won an award um, in Europe in Food Matters Live as the best new product of the year, which just blew us away. One of the things that Narina really worked hard on is that Nalido is now a proud B Corporation. And a B Corporation, there are about three to 4,000 of them in the world today. This means that we have the highest standards of social and environmental impact. So we measure our success not by entirely finance of course that is part of it profits then we look also at our community impact and our environmental impact and we don't just look at it we actually measure it and on our website you will see how many pest how many how much pesticides and herbicides we saved uh from being used um the deforestation uh, that we've helped prevent that use of water, um, siltation, and carbon sequestering. So lots of measuring. We had got a student from UBC doing her master's degree in forestry and environmental sciences that came to us uh, for about um, three months, and she helped us figure out the standards and begin to measure them. So every year we'll be measuring them. There's lots of uh, spices in the world going to North America, etc. And their journey is usually farmer to auction house, to traders, to importers and exporters, and then to the brand, and then to the consumer. So um, our spice journey is much shorter and much more impactful on the grower themselves. So we start with the grower, then we go to Nolito, then we go to you. The world's largest markets for natural food and beverages is going through the roof. Look at those numbers. And it has gone even further since COVID. 2017, we see how many millions of 570 million US dollars, 1 million um, metric tons. Now we go to 2024, the prediction for the future. 
1.3 billion US, 1.7 million metric tons. But, you know, it's, it's a very, very enjoyable business to be in, it's tough, uh, but we hope that we make an impact in many ways. So in community development, we have young people come from overseas that want to learn about um, social impact and turmeric, and we've had business students from several universities, we've had environmental students, we've had a number of students, and we introduce them to our growers and tour them through a, a turmeric growers place. Here's one of our favorite growers. We also donate product to our community um, whenever there's a need. And during COVID, that was uh, quite extensive. Um, we must have donated at least $8,000 worth of product in the Punta Gorda and Toledo communities. We also do internships. And by the way, you can see that our team, is a young team, on the right hand side, you'll see um, the wonderful young lady that came from Germany and Canada to teach our team about food science. It is an area that I think is very important to develop. And on the left side, you see uh, from a university in Canada, um, a team coming ahead to prepare for their students coming in the years to come. Here's part of our team. They're all young. And when I came to Belize, remember I said I was working on youth and enterprise. And um, I decided that we would try and uh, train young people. Uh, most of our team members are under the age of 30. So I'm really proud of them. Our growers, we couldn't do it without them. Our growers, we go and we actually inspect, first teach, then inspect. Actually, I think I'll start with, we first we observe what growers have been doing. And then we teach about what we need. That is no pesticides, no herbicides, and a whole bunch of other things. Then we um, test the farm and check it out, and then decide to give growers their Membership with Toledo, we now have over 300 to 350 small scale growers. There is nobody that we buy from that is growing to work as a mon. We also have field team. There's Mr. Eco on the left. He's a respected member of his community. And if we say, Mr. Eco, we want turmeric from your region. He gathers it up from the growers that have been um, uh, inspected and brings it to the factory because he's one of the few guys who has a, a truck. And then on the right hand side um, is Mr. Fred Williams' son. Now, Fred is the first person I met that grew turmeric, and that's in Maphrodite. He's of East Indian ancestry. So our growers are of every ancestry Belize has, uh, from um, expats to Garifuna to Creole, East Indians. But it appears now that the majority of our growers are Mayan. Melito is uh, also uh, trying to use turmeric in many ways. Uh, about four years ago, we introduced our fantastic Indian mango pickle for Belize only. And that sold very well, and it's in limited uh, edition. Then uh, Narina started making face packs. That is an old Indian tradition. Um, it's a really good for the skin. It lightens dark spots, etc., and helps with acne. Um, and then Narina introduced our turmeric drinks in Canada last year and they have been flying excuse me flying off the shelf doing well and she will begin doing that in Belize shortly 
We also have a turmeric face oil, but we also make sesame oil and sesame seed bran. And we also buy turmeric soap from um, Barranco and um, export it to Canada. So I'll stop sharing there. Let's see. I'm gonna figure this out, stop sharing. <laughs> Where do I do that? Marita, where do I do the stop share? Anyway, I that's my presentation. And if there are questions, et cetera, let's uh, begin whatever it is that our team wants to do next. At the bottom, Zoom, okay. Here, I'll, I'll stop the sharing for you. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Rick. Okay, so, so far we've only got a couple of questions. So everybody that's on the call, think of questions that you'd like to ask and send them to the, through the chat, through to the pro-organic host. Um, and all right, let me find. Maybe I should, should I just talk? Sorry, I just remembered. I, I think I should talk about how you can use turmeric. Go for it. In, yes. in your food. Yes. Okay. So turmeric is normally used in almost every Indian dish. So curries, um, or rice, etc. Uh, in Belize, it's used very much with Indian cuisine, which is um, the kuhun cabbage. But when we took it to North America, um, we found out that you can use turmeric in so many other ways. So uh, you can add it to hot water and honey, and it is fabulous for arthritis. Um, also, golden milk. All these recipes, by the way, are on our website, which is www.nalido.com. Um, golden milk is cardamom, cinnamon, and cloves and honey with turmeric in hot milk. Um, then what the unique ways of using turmeric are you mix turmeric with butter and garlic and pour it over your nice steamed corn or roasted corn, over your cauliflower or any vegetables, in stir fries, and I just love it in soups. And I know this is a weird one, but I love it in escabeche. Uh, it just makes it richer. But chicken soup, uh, beef soup, any vegetable soup, it's just super. So I even use it in spaghetti. Um, I use it in my meatballs. I use it as a marinade for, uh, it's a beautiful marinade with prawns and uh, conch, um, and then you make whatever start, just using it. You'll be surprised to find out how, how uh, versatile this spice is. And it is not spicy, it's delicious. Um, Noreena just said, you can talk about the best growing climates for turmeric. Yes, turmeric grows really well in Toledo. Uh, and all over the country in Belize. You need a bit of a slope in your land, make sure that it can drain well so the root doesn't get rotten. Do not use pesticides or herbicides because nothing likes turmeric and um, any other herbs that grow along with turmeric, it's fine because once the turmeric is ripe and ready, the, the leaves drop. They call it drop in Belize. They, they get dark, uh, brown and fall to the ground. And that's when you know it's ready. Um, so no pesticides, no, um, no herbicides and no watering. Um, it really loves the climate in Belize. Plant it under shade. It likes shade, not too much sun. So I hope that helps. What, what type of soil does it like? Rich black soil. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't really like sandy soil. And it's amazing that if you have a small 
uh, quantity, say about 10 plants, that's just like way enough home use. And remember, don't eat turmeric raw. Make sure you always cook it. It releases the, the curcuminoids uh, for absor absorption. And many people like to say, add black pepper. We add beautiful black pepper, um, that teller cherry black pepper that is grown uh, in at the spice farm. When you prepare it, do you do you cut it and dry it, or um, how, how do you prepare it for for cooking or using? Um, I would always just cut it up, blend it, add it to your food, and cook with it. Like if you're going to have soup, take just grind it up and add it like that to the stew, soup. Don't dry it because when you dry it, you lose those oils. Okay. And for home, home use, you can always uh, freeze it. And do you just harvest it or is it harvested just once a year? Is that right? Um, no, we found out um, that we can harvest it year round. Oh. The curcuminoid levels change a little bit. The color changes a little bit, but uh, we harvest all year round because the in, in Toledo, it's growing wild and it has been there for many decades. So some of the turmeric root is very old, so we can um, rotate, go from one grower to the next. Okay. We have about a five million pounds of turmeric in, in Toledo. Ooh. What's the best age of the plant for harvesting? I would say the best is two years. Okay. In nine months, you will get, a, you can begin to harvest, but if you leave it for two years, you'll get a fantastic root. So if you're gonna start a farm, you would plant in stages so you could have a, every three months have a harvest or every month have a harvest. Absolutely. Yep. Or you can just plant it all at one time and harvest it as you wish because it's continuously growing. Do you outsource all the growing of the turmeric or do y'all actually grow any of your own? Well, we decided as, um, as a social enterprise that we would not uh, uh, grow any ourselves. We, okay, so you're we just buy it processing all. part of the supply chain then. Mm -hmm. Okay. We could, we could have come and just bought land and grow it ourselves, but the impact on the community wouldn't be as great. Yeah, and I think that's a very good thing about, um, and what really needs to be taught in Belize is the whole, that whole supply chain process and that you can't be every point in the supply chain. <laughs> oh, absolutely. We are only one small part, yep. but our, we have to use our expertise, which is marketing and promotion and yep. manufacturing. Yep. And we are not the experts on growing. We learn from our growers and our growers learn from us. Perfect. So I'll start reading a couple of questions. Um, you mentioned that the curcuminoids are depleted when made into powder. Are they maintained at a higher level if made into an alcohol-based tincture? Um, I do believe that absolutely, yes. And how do you compare in-country sales with export sales? 95% uh, of our sales are export. So um, our, uh, it, took, it took us the longest time to get a distributor. It's Circle R in Belize. Um, nobody wanted to do distribute in Belize until we proved ourselves in another country, which is really a bad, you know, for Belizean products. Uh, so uh, we had to show our exports and then Belizean uh, uh, distributor said, okay, we'll, we'll try it out. And now it's growing. The Belizean market is growing. 
Um, ah, someone found it quite overwhelming in taste when they tried your turmeric paste. How much do you put into soup, like a four quart pot? Okay, so we're making a, four, uh, a big pot of something, uh, curry or soup. Um, uh, that would be a spoonful. Uh, I don't know how some people just pick it up in a teaspoon and eat it, but apparently some do. I personally can't. I find it totally overwhelming. I agree. Um, so I would put a, a teaspoon uh, for a cup or half a teaspoon for a cup full of the golden milk or whatever, but and a spoonful in your curries or in soups. Not too much. I totally agree. It's Do you blood. know how many varieties are in Belize? And this person has seen images of blue, green, and yellow. Two. We have the longa and uh, the zinga base and the xanthoria. The white turmeric and yellow turmeric. Now, within the yellow turmeric, I think it's only one variety and that is alipay. Um, and do you plan to make turmeric in a capsule form as a food supplement? Not yet, uh, but we are uh, already beginning to make powder for export to CARICOM. I really believe uh, that it, the whole food is the way to go and uh, eating properly. I haven't, we're not doing the capsules right now. And I don't know whether we will. I really think the way we eat is the best yeah. way. Shoving capsules down our throats, I don't know. <laughs> so your belief basically would be to see like with your paste is to just incorporate more of the paste into your daily food or drink um, and let that be the supplement. Yes, absolutely. And by the way, when you make capsules, you have to go through a lot more oops, in terms of food safety, pharmaceuticals, all that other stuff. We're just not, we just can't do that. And, and equipment, everything costs. And so we have to do things one at a time. So to get the most beneficial, mm, the most benefit out of the turmeric, um, it, you say is not in powder form. So like making the tincture or the paste, but mm -hmm. you, and so do you cook the turmeric like in order to make your paste? Absolutely. Um, we have to heat it and then bottle it for food safety, but it really uh -huh. is great for absorption, the way we make it. We add several things to it, um, all found in Toledo and Stan Creek, lime juice, coconut oil, sea salt. Yeah. And then and the black pepper? Yes, and we have a black pepper variety. The kind of black pepper is we buy, with the one we buy teletary from, um, from, uh, sorry, Spice Farm. Okay. We, tr we try and contribute to our local economy as much as possible. We try and buy almost everything, all the ingredients. The only ingredient we can't buy locally is salt, sea salt. I wish somebody would make sea salt. Uh, uh. We'd buy lots of it. <laughs> Um, can you speak to the issue of the body's ability to absorb turmeric? Yeah, it's not an easy thing for the body to absorb. So if you just have, if you don't have an oil and you don't have um, uh, the pepperin, it is much harder for your body to absorb. Now, but most of the work with pepperin or pepper has been done on dogs. And by the way, if you own dogs, add turmeric to their diet. 
it really helps as they age and really helps with inflammation. So huh. it's it's and, ho not and horses and horses, but not cats. Yeah, not cats. Yes. Thank you, Narina. Narina, would you like to answer some of the questions too, since you're there? Show us your face. Uh, I am still in my PJs. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, it's um, a lot of people come to us and say, you have to have pepper uh, when you have tumor. And those studies are done on dogs in Australia. And people have um, translated that information to human beings. But I think that, yep, yeah, Sure, add pepper, add cayenne pepper if you want. Um, it uh, might help with absorption, but I know the fats help. If possible, cost per pound factory and cost per pound at the PG market. Um, I think it's about the same. Um, I figured out the price of turmeric by uh, I could have bought it for 10 cents a pound. Literally, nobody was buying it in volume. But I went and I dug up turmeric and measured the time and effort and then um, extrapolated to the uh, minimum wage, et cetera. So we, pay, we buy our turmeric at, Nazarena, is it six or seven times? Six or seven times the six. fair trade six times the fair trade price. So can you imagine in India, how much, so we pay $1.50 Belize a pound. Can you imagine in India, how little the growers get um, for their turmeric? Hmm. It's really a poverty level crop. It is, we have changed that in Belize. We have decided that we could have been really, really good entrepreneurs and just buy the 10 cents a pound and make a gigantic profit, but that's not what we're doing. We love our growers and our growers really get along with us. They come there all the time and want, want to register new uh, growers, but right now we have a limited capacity, so we only buy a certain amount but it's like a bit at least a hundred thousand pounds a year and someone once is asking are you haccp certified we're how sub compliant and our full certification is we've got a hassle plan we're just waiting for the americans to come down and do that part but yes that was a huge leap by the way and um, I really encourage um, I really encourage Baha to teach the cat has a course to people because th this is a big challenge. And then the machinery and all the other things that are involved. But um, thanks for asking that question. HACCP is very important. You cannot export without it. We do have our deep. Um, we do have our FDA and Canadian export permits and now doing our UK ones. So we're, we're good right now. And are you teaching Belizeans the whole process of manufacturing and marketing and exporting? Well, some of the stuff we have to realize we're, um, we are a private company and we um, certainly teach our whole team all that, but they sign non-disclosure agreements. <laughs> um, this is a very special recipe. And uh, so others, others have tried to copy it and have found that they can't seem to get it right. By the way, turmeric um, is uh, oxidizes very quickly and does some really interesting things, I must say. So I'd like to tell you something about turmeric and alcohol. If you take our turmeric paste and you put half a teaspoon and you make a martini, then take this martini and put it under black light, this will glow bright green. I even had a pair of shoes that were Italian white leather 
and in my bag a turmeric bottle bust broke and leaked onto the shoe so I dyed the whole shoe and it becomes luminescent in black light and what turmeric does is it drags it's drags alcohol through the blood brain barrier very quickly so you can get really drunk really quickly on a turmeric martini but what that says is that turmeric goes is absorbed by the brain very quickly so it is very good for mental health and then it then goes down into the liver and helps process the alcohol very quickly so you have no hangover but i would recommend putting turmeric in your tropical drinks Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, we made pies with it. I've made breads with it. You just try it. It's amazing. Like somebody's making zucchini bread today, Ginny. Ginny? Banana this, bread, yes. Oh, sorry, banana bread or zucchini bread or any of those. Add yeah. a, pay, a tablespoon uh, per um, batch. Um, tablespoon of our truly turmeric into it and you'll be surprised it's lovely ah it's a beautiful yeah. rich color and breads with turmeric and chocolate with turmeric in Vanuatu they make uh in the Pacific they make turmeric chocolate mm. so it's two major antioxidants together Okay, so um, I'm just reading the questions as they came in. So medicinally, the tincture would be more powerful than the powder capsules. I think you kind of already answered I that. I think so. I, I haven't done the experiments, but my intuition tells me yes. Could the name of the varieties be written in the chat, please? <laughs> the name of the variety in Belize? the name of the variety yeah does the person john do you want the name of the varieties just in belize or the, or are you referring to the the um the black the yellow and the white let me see yes the, the ones in belize please ah, okay, okay so she did put it in the chat to everyone it's the alipay the alape is the yellow turmeric, what you call yellow ginger, and then zinger basi. I hope I'm spelling it right. Basi a is the white turmeric that can be used also, but bitter, bitter. Um, and can I ask how long the turmeric is heated, please? Ten minutes, maybe um every everybody would do it differently but if you take raw turmeric and you add it to a spaghetti sauce or to the soup it will be cooking with it and that's great but as for making the paste um there are HACCP standards that we use but 10 minutes sounds right mm -hmm. And where do you buy the bottles you use? Do you find the import tariff for the bottles requires a higher price for the product than you would prefer? <laughs> okay, that's a really good question. And one of the most frustrating things about doing business in Belize was um, this bottle importation. But we went and got our factory designated as a DPA zone. So we do not pay import and export taxes. Um, so we import our bottles by the container load. And um, so it is more affordable that way, but the world right now is experiencing shortages um, uh, all over the world for bottles. So we are very challenged in our supply chain. There were three months this year we had to just shut down because we couldn't get bottles. And what is the DPA designation? What is that? Um, I'm or what does it mean? It means it's an export processing zone. That means 
the government comes, you fill out, you do your business plan. I think ours was, Narina wrote it 180 pages. Um, and we had to tell, talk about our financial structure. We had to talk about our growers, all that in our business plan, but really in depth, projecting forward and then telling the government what kinds of assets we need to import and how much would we export. They've, uh, they evaluate that and decide whether you can have an export processing zone and we pay um, a fee for that every year, depending on the square footage of the property. And they can come in, oh, that somebody asks, asked about bottles. We always have people ask us if they can buy bottles. And I've been telling the government of Belize that you have got to make access to the bottles more affordable. Um, I would suggest people call BMDC, Belize Marketing and Development Corporation. I've been at them for the last six years to import bottles for other people um, and, for, and with us. Um, if we can get them at a lower duty, that's great. But BMDC should be doing this for Belizeans because there are many homemade products that are made in Belize and can be sold in Belize or even exported at a small volume that uh, isn't happening. But remember, they have to be food grade bottles, nothing else. And I, at our factory, we go glass, we don't do anything in plastic because um, we're a B Corp and I hate plastic. <laughs> Is there anyone in the Catacomb countries that produces bottles? Wouldn't that yes, they are in Jamaica, uh, but they don't produce what we need. Um, that would be great. There's about three producers. Um, there's also in um, Guatemala, and, but they have all run out of bottles. The supply chain has gone bad. And it now even costs twice as much and takes twice as long uh, to export anything to Canada and the United States. Wow. Because of the shipping. And we don't get paid till like uh, two months after the product arrives in the country. So, our cash flow is challenging. But you know, am I, is this all relevant to backyard gardens? I'm just, uh, I'm sorry I'm talking about the <laughs> mass production, but I have a backyard garden at my, in my heart. <laughs> That's our growers. They are backyard gardeners. They are not massive scale growers. So approximately how much, like a, just a little part of an acre maybe, do most of the growers grow for you? Yes, I'd say less. Sometimes it's a dining room size, you know, table size patch. And sometimes it's about half an acre or an acre, but all grown under, under the forest canopy. <laughs> Never monoculture i will not buy from a monoculture i just disapprove of that so do the farmers along with growing the turmeric for your company what else are they growing absolutely great question so they might grow cardamom they might grow black pepper um cassava um definitely cacao uh any of this, mangoes, whatever, under the mango trees, you'll see a whole pile of turmeric growing on many different berries, under blackberry trees. They're growing a lot of different things. And that's what makes me happy because once one product is done, then they can go for the turmeric and then something else. It diversifies their income. Is your HAACP certification adequate for all the countries you want to export to, or do they require other certification? Um, we will need a little bit more than that uh, for 
of the EU community. There's this defense part, which is then X-raying everything to make sure there's nothing like metal metals in there or glass. And Marie Sharp is her her facility is admirable. She's totally has certified now, and oh, everything in her factory is magnificent. I wish I had all that. Should I read this? Can you repeat those expert certifications again? FDA and Narina, what's the Canadian one? CFHA? C -A. Yeah, so for for Canada, um, you don't need, um, HACCP is fine, uh, but however, the person that will be importing your products needs to have a Safe Food for Canadians license and have all of that registration done, which also can include um, a supply chain inspection where they're looking at the facility that they're purchasing from um, their their production records and all of that. And then the US, you have to register as a foreign entity uh, with the FDA. And that leaves you subject to um, inspections from the FDA where they will fly a team from the States to Belize to physically come and check your factory. They'll swab wherever they feel like, and then send those swabs back for tests for salmonella, E. coli, et cetera. Um, and then they have the power to um, stop production uh, if they feel like you don't pass their standards. One of the things that would be so helpful, and you mentioned from your group, is organic certification. And Narina, would you speak to that, please? Yes, actually. So one thing that I think um, we are really trying to push in Toledo, especially uh, because uh, I think somebody in the chats asked about what's the farthest from the factory uh, we purchase from growers. Uh, so we, we are right now exclusively in Toledo purchasing, um, but as we expand, we'll expand to other districts. Um, but the Toledo Toledo climate has the best conditions for, for turmeric. Uh, and then in terms of, um, what was the question again? Um, organic Sorry. certification. Oh yes. So for organic certification, we are really trying to figure out a cost-effective way for our growers to become organically certified. Um, we have had quotes from uh, various uh, bodies and uh, it seems to be quite hard for small scale growers. Um, we were quoted about $25,000 a year to organically certify um, all of our different uh, growers. And that's not something that they can bear as a cost. So yeah, well, that's something we'd love to <laughs> chat with your group about more. <laughs> I know with, with Pro Organic, um, we work with some farmers and it's, to begin with, it's a, a big step just to get them to not use pesticides. Yes. So, you know, we can say pesticide free um, and not even attempt the organic route at this point in time. Um, That's what we're doing, pesticide and herbicide free. Right. But we even have to work with growers about washing the turmeric, not to wash it in the creek because the silt will go into the creek um, and kill fish. And, you know, it's better if the silt remains in the, in the soil, all kinds of things that you all know already. Well, even washing the turmeric in, in creek water, just because of what can be in the creek or washing it with river water. Exactly. <laughs> you would want to use fresh, good water to wash it in, I assume. Yes, and but we at the factory wash it again and again. So that's part of our HACCP uh, stuff that we do. Ooh. But yeah. do you take this, the, the skin off? I love it? that question. That's a great question. I played around with that. So when I first started, I took the skin off 
and I was like, look at the color now. It's beautiful. It's more orange. It's better. And then I realized when the skins were lying in the water, so much oil was leaking out of the skin. I realized, oh, there's a lot of the, the curcuminoids and other essential oils in that skin. So we keep the skin on. I know when I've done my own, taking the skin off, oh my gosh. Don't do it. <laughs> Just wash it. I gave up. Yes, don't do it. It's not worth it. It's even the worst thing you could do. <laughs> um, so any more questions? I just want people to know that when we sell the product in Belize at our factory, we sell it for $5 Belize for eight ounces, $10 Belize for the 16 ounce bottle. So I just want you to know that when we sell it at, in Belize, we sell it at our cost price because we want people in Belize to use it. So please, I encourage you, um, you don't have to get your hands yellow. <laughs> Go and buy it from your local store. And I encourage you to grow it because it's a beautiful plant. And it can grow in pots, by the way. Is everything you export branded with your company or do you export any raw or semi-raw product in bulk? Oh, that's a very good question too. We do export and we will be exporting more root and um, we have just made a really special deal with a very special movie star who's starting a product, um, um, a beauty line like ours. And uh, that uh, is going to be sent in bulk. And you'll hear about it soon. <laughs> I know, it's so exciting. So list of products. Someone, someone asked, um, could we hear a bit more about the genesis of the idea? Okay, so that means where did the idea come from? How did it come? Okay, so I want to say thank you to my mother and all the Indian ancestors I've had before me because we make um, tumor, we make um, ginger paste, garlic paste, etc. to cook with. When she came from Africa, I'm from Uganda, uh, to Canada. Um, she would have, she had a business and working hard. She wanted to make her curries and everything quickly. So she made a paste. So when I went to Belize and I met Mr. Williams, um, Fred Williams, um, I looked at his turmeric and I don't know whether you guys believe in any spiritual thing or whatever, but I shook his hand and I immediately thought of my mother and the paste. And I bought some of the turmeric and I went home and I made the paste. And the original recipe that I made is the recipe we still use. That is, it was just magical. <laughs> so that's the genesis of the idea. I came, I don't know, my mom and all the great spirits before me. And uh, the list of products, the turmeric soap, which is made in Barranco. And then we have the drinks coming up. Then we have sesame oil, sesame seed bran. You must try the bran in the breads. In breads, it's fantastic. And then the mango pickle, the Indian mango achar or pickle. Uh, what else do we make? Oh my gosh, I make a lemon pickle. Whatever I can try with turmeric, I do. Do you find it hard to, to maintain your product quality when you uh, ramp up your production volume? No, that's because we have a good asset plan. Okay. Yeah, when we ramp up, in fact, we are just dying to ramp up more. It's, uh, it, we are so ready to do that. Now we're also uh, applying for that alternate energy loan from DFC so that we can be entirely solar powered for our hot water and um, electricity. I'm really looking forward to that part. But you guys, just please remember that this is not a big corporation. This is a mother-daughter team. 
<laughs> that's working really hard. It's our own money. Uh, we have not taken money from anywhere else. We have scrimped and saved and leave, live a very, very um, austere life. We don't, we're not a big corporation that came into Belize and decided to do this. this these are people, we are people that care about the environment. We, are, we care about community and uh, we live a simple life so that others can simply live, as Gandhi would say. And how can we get your product? Where in Belize are your products sold? Okay. So please um, go to our website, nalido.com. You will find where to buy the products in Belize. Okay. So Brody's has, has been, uh, uh, took it on very early in the game. And um, I'm trying to think the others, Narina. Many, many Brody's, things. yeah, Brody's, Publix. Publix. Um, there's some retailers in each district. So uh, on our website, there's a where to buy section uh, and it's listed by country. So if you click on Belize, it'll have a little list of stores um, by district. And I think there's some online channel now in Belize that's selling it. I just can't remember the name. I uh, found Belize. it even in Chen's in uh, Santa Elena. You can buy it in Santa Elena in the Chinese stores. Yes, that was one of the hardest things. The Chinese did not want to take it on. And uh, so thankful to Circle R. If anybody's got products that they want spread around Belize, Circle R are fabulous. They treat us so well. And they got it into those Chinese stores because they sell rice to the Chinese. Are you um, distributing through Belize on for the online market? That's it, yep. yes. Beauty line is done that way, and so is the mango pickle and the sesame oil. Oh gosh, Belizean sesame oil, so nice. And someone sent a message. Um, how about sesame paste, like tahini? She's this she buys it in Belize, but it's all imported. I can make uh, special batches of tahini for anybody that wants some when, uh, when uh, sesame is in season. So if you could call our factory and tell them what you want and how much you want, this will be very affordable. I can do that. But uh, the our tahini will not be as light as the imported one because it will be skin on. And why is that? Because uh, I, I don't have the machinery to shut the skin and just like the turmeric skin, I think skins always have a lot of nutrients in there. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions for Omida or Narina? Yes, I had a question. Uh, good evening, Omida. Mr. Um, Arana, I yeah. want to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will go to PG soon. Come, please, yeah. Mr. Arana. I see your Facebook page, by the way. I see almost <laughs> all of your Facebook pages, and I learned so much, and I'm always saying, wow, look at that. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Yes, I wanted to ask about the... Um, you are mentioning several products about the configuration of the factory. If you started with one configuration and then expanded or, or how, how, how does that work? Uh, um... Oh my goodness, John, what a good <laughs> question that is. Okay, so when we first started with our 800 square foot factory, I, our configuration was not perfect. When we moved to the factory in Hopeville, now we have close to perfection. But there is one simple rule. Start at one end, end at the other end. Never go backwards. Not and, even. And like what is the size of the new factory? About 4,000 square feet. Thank you. We started with 800. And uh, that was really loopy. We couldn't, like, we weren't going in a straight line. But, man, if you were going to make a factory of, for any product in Belize, just make it one long line <laughs> and not round in circles. And when you make stuff at home for sale, 
uh, for food safety, don't go backwards. Uh, have your chopping board over here on one side and then something, the next step, then the next step, then the next step. And you're bottling at the last step and label at the last step and do not come back. <laughs> Yeah, yes, I asked because I'm an architect and we study these flows of um, flows of people, flows of the use of the building and how it moves from one to the next. John, That's why I was interested. John, can you come visit us? Because we would love to build a purpose uh, factory. We tried to ask, uh, what's his name? Uh, he's an architect and minister right now from Kyle. Uh, Mr. Espat. Espat. Yeah, I asked Espat and his wife, they didn't do anything. And, uh, you know, it's pretty simple, but if we could have a state of the art factory that was a green factory, solar, everything built in there and um, be able to air condition the place and seal it up properly. John, you're an architect. I want to see you. We'll speak, we'll speak. And especially since you care about farmers and growers, uh, a lot of people ask us what's the why we call our um, our uh, farmers growers. Um, our turmeric is labeled as wild crafted. That means it's grown wild. If you use the word farmer, it means that you're actively um, seeding and all that stuff. So that's why we call them growers. In your production process, do you use um, like a make to order process or do you use um, production forecasting? Made, made per order. Okay. We can't forecast, not during COVID, it really fell apart. Yep. We would have loved to have gone to that uh, methodology, but they just know. We have, mm -hmm. we get purchase orders and we begin. Yep. That actually cuts out a lot of, a lot of cost. Yeah. And we need that right now. That this this whole COVID time has just been scary. Scary for our team, scary for our growers, everything. And yet the world demand for turmeric has risen tremendously mm -hmm. during this process. Now we're trying to make sure that when people think of turmeric, by the way, 98% of turmeric comes from India. But turmeric from India has been. Uh, the FDA has stopped some of the shipments because they've got lead in there because they use lead to increase weight and change color. And then they use sawdust to increase volume. Not only do they pay, our, pay their farmers nothing for that turmeric, then they adulterate. So um, we're, try, we're getting the reputation in Belize as have, being a good spot to buy turmeric. Is there a, a grading, world market grading system on turmeric? No. Unfortunately. They don't even talk about the variety or the curcumin content or any of that. Hmm. That, might and, be, that might be something good to start a grading system. Yes. Yes, that would, Rick. But we have started it. We say that we are wild crafted and have the highest curcumin level without any pesticides or herbicides. And we contribute to the um, benefit, benefit of the community in Toledo. The impact has been amazing. I tell you, when I sell, when we sell, to, when we buy turmeric, the growers have to plant 10 trees for every a thousand pounds that they, that we buy. The, when we talk to our growers and they come and sell at our factory, they sell, tell us, thank you so much. Now my kid can go to school and I'm saying, thank you so much. We couldn't do this without you. Another question. Um, this person seen several articles demonstrating that turmeric and neem can be antiviral. Gosh, I can't, as a, as a company, that is, um, we have to 
adhere to standards um, and claims. Uh, Narina, would you like to talk about that? By the way, Neem is fabulous. In East Africa, where I come from, it's called Marabaine. It means it can cure 40 illnesses. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so so one thing I've, I've actually noticed uh, in Belize quite a bit is um, very wild health claims on what uh, certain plants can do. And they may or may not be accurate in terms of traditional medicine and uses for that. I mean, <clears throat> turmeric does have the reputation of being antibacterial and antiviral, but it has not been proven in the scientific community uh, with like large scale clinical trials. Um, and when you're exporting products to, uh, I'll use Canada for an example, because they're, they're very strict. Um, as soon as you make any type of health claim on a product, um, you have to register it as a um, supplement. And that's where you <clears throat> get into a lot more regulations. You have to have uh, more lab equipment, standardizations, um, food products. However, <clears throat> if you're, if you're making a food product, you cannot have, uh, any health claims. And in the U S they're starting to become a little bit more like that as well. Uh, in the EU, no health claims at all, nothing. Uh, you state the nutritional facts, um, you know, you can have your organic certification or whatever else, but you can't make health claims. And the EU, you can't even make any health claims on your website either. So I think that's something for Belize to be really competitive in the international market. Um, we just have to get our standards up, I think, in terms of how we talk about products, you know, the story behind it, I think is where Belizean products can really shine. Um, and uh, the other thing that, I would love to see a little bit more of is um, <clears throat> a more modern, well, let's say modern with a flavor uh, branding. So uh, don't use Comic Sans as a font ever. <laughs> I just want to talk very quickly about potential. Um, um, we have an importer in the States that wants, oh, um, uh, custard apple, uh, blackberry, as in not uh, the Belizean blackberry, which is actually, um, what did I call it? Uh, jambura. Anyway, jambura or jamun. Um, and there are so many other products. Anybody wanting to talk to me about potential for export of different products and distributors we're happy to help. Um, we had such a struggle. It was very difficult. And Bell Trade was an absolute impediment in the beginning and now have improved. And one thing I think everyone would find interesting <clears throat> is uh, we have a, a client in the States who wants to buy uh, fresh raw turmeric root uh, by the container load. However, um, the FDA requires, um, you the country has to have approval for fresh fruit and vegetable uh, exports or imports into the US and Belize is not allowed to send fresh turmeric to the US. And we tried to figure out how we could get that done as a company, but it is government to government. And we know that that is now, that now means that's gonna take a long time. <laughs> so anyone else wanting to pressure them for different fresh fruits and vegetables uh, with the FDA, we'll buddy up with you and <laughs> try and get that done faster. Is there a possibility of going through Mexico to do that? No. Or no, because, no, because when you export, everything comes with a certificate of origin. Uh, um, yeah. So it, it, even like for our products, if we, um, you know, send the jars up from Belize to Canada and then send from Canada to the EU, it's still a product of Belize. Okay. I know some, I know some products you can get around it, but I wasn't sure about food product. No. They no, food so is so fun. strict. Yeah. So food is cosmetics. 
um, have very few regulations. They have, uh, you know, certain compounds that you can't use or restrictions on like formulations, et cetera. Um, but anything that goes into a human being is highly regulated uh, in terms of uh, origin, contents, certifications, et cetera. You know, the- <clears throat> I, I, I have a question, is the, is the bottleneck in Belize with Baja? Yes, and with Ministry of Trade and Commerce. Naughty, it's really nasty. We've sent them letters. We've told them exactly how to do it. And they tell us, now you do it. And we say, here's the link. You have to do it. And Noreena, how many months has it been? Two months. We haven't heard back on that. And then we go to the Minister of Agriculture. And he says he's going to phone us. And you know what it's all like. But are you the only one pushing that? Or is, are there... Is there other groups or organizations trying to push that? Well, uh, we, uh, I think in terms of turmeric, we're the only one, but when it comes to soursop and, and the minister wants to export soursop, good luck. There's no deal with the US, you can't get it in there. Yeah. One of the things I wanted to try to start promoting through Pro Organic is more of um, business training because I, I think there's a real lack in Belize of understanding supply chain. I mean, just within the country, understanding supply chain, the logistics yes. of moving something from point A to point B. Um, and, and then exporting would be a whole nother thing. And I really think that the country could do quite well if they got into exporting products. Well, I'll, so I'll, give, an, I'll give an example actually. So, um, there is a manufacturer of these beautiful bamboo straws in Belize, like best bamboo straws I've seen um, so far on the market. Yep. And we wanted to buy wholesale from them and uh, bring it into Canada so that it can be sold in the 1500 stores that we have retail relationships with. Now, pricing in Belize is a challenge. So we could not get that manufacturer to understand that wholesale yeah wholesale retail and the wholesale he'd say well I'll give you like a dollar off per straw which would have meant it's a 23 dollar star uh, straw once it gets to uh, North America so you have to factor in shipping costs export fees but also the distributor of your product is going to want a 25 percent margin and then the retailer is going to want anywhere between 35 and 60 percent margin and so belize at the moment is not price competitive in that regard um there's there's i think and that's where that business education has to come in to say you know if you're looking for export uh you have to think of it as maybe you won't be making you know a hundred percent profit maybe right. you'll be making a 10 or 15 or 20 percent but you have to look at the volume yeah, aspect. So if you're making, you know, if you're making a million dollars in bamboo straw sales and, and you know, 20% of that is pure profit, you're doing great. <laughs> well, volume is something that's not understood either. So mm -hmm. um, my wife runs an artisan bakery and people don't, when we try to start getting into wholesale, wholesale retail, you know, your single bread costs you this. And they're like, well, why can't I get it at the price you're selling to these guys? It's like, well, they're buying 50 breads at a time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you buy 50, we'll sell them to you for that much. It's like, well, I don't have the free freezer space for that. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Rick, I want bread. When I go to Belize, I just really want good bread. <laughs> I'll, 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 send you the, I'll send you the menu. We, we do artisan bread, so yes. <sighs> Long fermentation <laughs> breads, not not um 20 minute cooked breads and um the other thing too about the whole business training i mean uh, that's something i'm really passionate about and when we look at our building our supply chain um all, all of our export licenses trademarks everything i've done that myself mm -hmm. um so that's something i have uh knowledge that took me a long time to get um yeah, that oh, i yeah. am happy to uh you know, train people up in, in Belize to just, there's so much potential here. 
but it has to, uh, we have to be competitive too. Yep. I, I just want to just tell you guys a funny story. So we're at this meeting and it's with uh, a huge store, a chain of stores. And he sits there and we've got the paste in a little jar. It's come from the kitchen kind of thing. And he said, what's your SRP? And Narina said, oh, excuse me, I just have to go to the washroom. And she goes to the washroom and Googles, what is SRP? <laughs> and it's suggested retail price. She comes back <laughs> with the answer. <laughs> So, you know, it's not like you have to know everything when you start, but you better be ready to learn everything. <laughs> don't don't be afraid to make mistakes either. That's another big thing I see in business. Yes. And we've made our mistakes. We yep. have. Oh, I've really enjoyed this time with you all. Oh, I think everybody has, and the recording will be um, available. I will send you, Amita, the link that you can download it yourself, um, but it'll also be posted on the Pro Organic website, usually within a couple of days. So if you know of anyone that wanted to be on the call but wasn't here and um, you know couldn't be on it right now, then they can go there and view the, the recording. So it's been most informative. Thank you. Thank Just you remember that in India, there's a whole province that is entirely organic. And that yes. province increased prices, increased every aspect of their economy. So let's go, Belize. <laughs> I, think, I, think I, it took also. On, I think it took them about three years to convert, didn't it? Yep. Yep. I saw a documentary on that. I can't remember what province. What it was. a beautiful, yeah, what a beautiful documentary. They were they were talking about how they confiscate um, products that were smuggled in and destroyed them. Yeah, yeah. But they've completely gone to, I think, one hundred percent organic. Yes, and yes. and Belize only has you know maybe four hundred thousand people. Uh, you know, we, to get a whole district under organic it is possible there's it's not like we're dealing with you know five million people that you have to convince so i think that's something where umida and i have been just slowly starting to plant the seeds in ministers and everybody that we talk to anyway thank you everybody for your time and i want to meet you all come to toledo come visit me i'd be happy to show you around and see, show you what we do Thank you. Sounds like a good weekend trip. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Okay. Nobody has anything else. We can end our meeting and look for the, the recording up on the Pro Organic website in a couple of days. Thank you so much.